But now, I worked until the early morning hours, going over the many petitions which John was receiving from citizens, mostly women, who were for abolition. I would summarize them and point out the most interesting. Yes, and every Monday morning, petition day in the House, I would rise and present these petitions before the House, much to the chagrin of the House leadership and the Southern representatives. <laughs> Then in 1836, Henry Pinckney of South Carolina presented a resolution that would prohibit these petitions or even discussions of slavery or abolition to be heard on the House floor. I stood and proclaimed, I hold this resolution to be in direct violation of the Constitution of the United States and the rules of this House and my constituents. The slavery question must be discussed in this body or our union will soon be torn apart. The gag rule, as it became known, was passed, 117 to 68. Mm. However, we kept receiving petitions. I continued to organize them, and John kept finding ways to at least attempt to present them. These moments led to many confrontations, and on one occasion, a threat of censure. Lydia Lewis and 315 women of Franklin, impressed with the simpleness of slavery, asked you to abolish it. Silence point of order! Silence Phoebe Weston and 156 women from Boston. The gentlemen from Massachusetts have a right, under the rule, to read the petition. Earnestly petition your honorable body to abolish slavery in the District of Columbia. The gentlemen from Massachusetts will be seated and, and to silence. declare every human being free who sets foot upon its soil. Silence him! Expel him! Mr. Adams, take your seat. <laughs> a month later, I said, I uh, have here a petition which appears to be from a number of, oh, slaves. <laughs> Expel him! Censor him! Uh, Mr. Chairman, he has insulted this chamber by implying that slaves have the right of petition. Oh, no, sir, that was simply going to be my question, if the petition was actually in order. You see, actually, it's from 22 slaves who are against abolition. <laughs> I hereby present it, as I have another one here from Benjamin Emerson of Haverhill, Massachusetts, which states that since the Union, as it is now operating, does not give equal benefits to all parts of the nation, and as the Union, as it is now operating, will soon destroy the whole country, he does hereby ask that Congress peaceably dissolve said Union. There you are, sir. This is the final insult. Since to this man, Mr. Chairman, he has called for rebellion. Sir, I have done nothing more than our forefathers did. In the first paragraph of the Declaration of Independence, it states that the people have a right to reform, to change, and to dissolve their government if necessary. He is insulting this body. Censure him. Sir, you will not censor me until I say this. By denying the right of petition to our citizens, you are performing an act that no despot even imposed upon the poorest of creatures. When the right of petition is denied to one group of people on one particular question, where will it end? Huh? What group will you limit next? No, for the preservation of this union, this question must be discussed, and I shall continue discussing it until the last breath leaves my body, or I succeed in overturning this most unjust of rules. I shall fight you, gentlemen. Now go ahead, censor me if you wish. Censor me if you can. <laughs> that one should have outlived his fame. This man is no better than the Benedict Arnold or Aaron Burr. <laughs> they tried to censure him, but John, being a great parliamentarian, knew that the rules of the House gave him the right to answer these charges. For one week he controlled the floor of the House, and at the end of that week, Mr. Adams said to the Speaker of the House, James Mr. Polk. Mr. Speaker, I need one more week to complete my defense. Oh. <laughs> but I offered to sit down if anyone would move the table to censure, never to have it taken up again. John Minor of Virginia did so, and his motion rapidly passed 106 to 93. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oh, before I sit down, I have a few pieces of unfinished business. I present a petition from a group of ladies from Quincy, Massachusetts, sir. And here I have a Table. petition of 256 women from Westminster. Table. Take your seat, Mr. Adams. Take your seat! <laughs> but perhaps the culmination of my efforts occurred February the 15th, 1839, when I offered an amendment to the Constitution which stated 
that as of uh, July the 4th, 1842, there shall be no hereditary slavery. Every child born in the United States would be free. Because of the gag rule, it wasn't even discussed.